please give a warm welcome to Robert Schock. Uh, well, thank you very much. I'm uh, really, it's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you to you and all the megalithomaniacs. It's, um, it's really been great so far, and I've been enjoying it. And I will be, as Hugh mentioned, here through, till Thursday. Katie, my wife, and I will be here to, um, for the various tours and whatnot. So today, what I'm going to focus on, I'm going to cover a lot of things but I want to focus really on Easter Island and how that ties in with other things we've been talking about or you've been listening to during this conference. And in many ways, Easter Island, everyone knows about Easter Island. We even brought, uh, Hugh arranged for uh, pieces of Easter Island to be here, uh, little Moai. Now, in actuality, I'm sure you realize that you can't take anything from Easter Island. Uh, so I think they're little reproductions. But Easter Island, in many ways, is a megalithomaniac's paradise. And it has the um, great moai, these heads and torsos. But as we'll see, it has a lot of other um, megalithomaniac type of uh, things. And it's known as Easter Island, goes by various names. One of the original names was actually Tipito, Tipito Tihenua. Um, which translates loosely, it can be translated different ways, but one way it translates is the navel of the world or the center of the world. And many places uh, claim this, certainly, but we'll see that maybe, maybe there is some validity to Easter Island. Easter Island is located in the Pacific. It's uh, very remote. It's often referred to as the most remote inhabited location on Earth, and that's not an exaggeration. It is about 2,000 kilometers from any other inhabited land. It has been inhabited. We don't know how long. Uh, that's part of my point of this presentation. The classical view is that Easter Island was first inhabited a mere, people argue 800 to 1500 years ago. So that's really not very long ago in terms of the time frame that we've been talking about this conference so far. Uh, it was not known to the West or Europeans until 1722 when Jacob Raghavin a Dutch admiral, Dutch um, uh, explorer, spotted it from his boat on Easter Sunday, 1722. So that's why it's called Easter Island. At that time, the Moai, this is an early 18th century painting of the Moai. Many of the Moai were still standing on their platforms, their ahus, but they, had, they were knocked down since European discovery. And by the 19th century, uh, they were all down. They've now been re-erected. At least some of them have been re-erected. Also bones. Do you, can you see that skull and bones? Yeah. Actually, it was pointed out to me uh, that if this is even in slightly correct proportion, that is a giant skull and those are giant bones. And I'll come back to that. Uh, this is a little map, our map of the little island. It's a volcanic island. You actually have... Uh, craters on it, uh, originally three craters, one which you can see very nicely now. Uh, some people would say they're extinct from a human, pers human perspective. I'm a geologist. My PhD is geology and geophysics from Yale, and you never know about volcanoes. They can be, quote, extinct, and then reemerge, should we say. But it is a classic volcanic island. It has literally tens of thousands of archaeological sites that have been cataloged. Uh, not just the Moai. The Moai, these, this is showing positions of these Moai. They occur in the hundreds. There's hundreds of them, literally. Big ones. And then there's small ones. And there's all kinds of archaeological treasures. They occur in complexes what are sometimes referred to as um, the Ahu complexes, and they're giving different names like Tahai here. And a lot of people don't realize this if they haven't been to Easter Island, but most of the Moai, at least the ones on the coast, they're on these Ahus and they face inland. A lot of people, if they've never been there, they actually think they would face out to sea, but no, they face inland. And I'm just going to show you some pictures of them. This is a side note. These um, horses sort of run wild over the island. 
They're actually a bit of a nuisance. But here you can see some of them on their Ahu. And these are incredibly large, at least some of them. There are small ones also. But the ones that are standing erect on Ahus nowadays, and as I said, they've been re-erected since the 18th century. Uh, they go up to about 10 meters tall, weighing up to about 75 tons. But some of them were even bigger. And we'll see some in the quarry. There's one in the quarry that's uh, been measured at 21 meters, estimated that weighs 250 tons. I mean, that's not insignificant. And some of the ones that are around the quarry, that only their heads are sticking up, and keep this in mind when we see the pictures, when they're excavated, they're incredibly um, tall. Some of them are more than uh, 10 meters, probably, and with comparable weights. But here's just to give you a little feel for the island. Some of you I know have been on the island with me. <laughs> and megalithomaniacs, not just the Moai, but look at this. The incredible stonework on the perimeter of the island behind the Ahus. I mean, this itself, and we were seeing different types of stonework earlier today. Uh, for instance, the poly polygonal type of stonework, et cetera. You find incredible megalithic stonework on the island besides just the Ahus. Um, just be on the Ahus besides just the Moai on the Ahus. Here it gives you another sense. These eyes are reconstructed, but they have found what the eyes look like. And they do seem to, can you see how they're looking up to the sky? That I believe is genuine, that they were looking to the sky that will become part of our story. This is my wife, Katie, Catherine Ulysses, who is, some of you may have seen her, she's here. Um, and some of the uh, Moai, you see these hats? I call it a hat, top knot, it may be the hair that's been pulled up and tied. It may be a hat. It may be something else. People argue exactly what it is. Some of them had them originally. Some of them have had them restored. They are separate stone. These moai, the typical moai, and there's another one from behind, the typical moai are made out of volcanic tufts. So it's a type of volcanic rock, but it's not super, super hard. I mean, it's hard enough, but it's not super hard. You'll notice here these heads have broken off and they've been repaired. That's when they fell down, the head snapped off. Uh, most of the ones on the Ahus, or many on the Ahus, may have had these top knots or caps or hats on them. They're made from a separate volcanic tufa rock, which is more red in color, has more iron in it but most of them haven't had that restored. Here gives you a view of the um, coastline. This here, do you see that? That, I was been looking at things like that very closely on Easter Island. I think that is probably at least partially constructed. So again, incredible megalithic skills. Taking a look at the uh, calderas, here's one of the um, calderas, Rano Cal, and there, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I mean, to a geologist, it's beautiful, but to many people, it's beautiful. And this is a, a caldera, but it's not active, at least in a modern sense of active. It was active in the last few thousand years. Right now, it's relatively...